Welcome back boys and girls. Today we're going to be talking about abstract classes and interfaces. It is a very popular interview question and I personally liked asking it myself as well. The interview question goes like this. You first ask to explain the difference between an abstract class and an interface. So what is the syntactical difference? How do you use it? Why would you use one over the other one? And perhaps can you give me some examples? As you go through the explanation of these questions, there are a lot of points where you can ask the candidate to drill down into their explanation. And at some point, people just run out of things to say or they just don't know what to say. Even now, if you're sitting there and you're thinking, I, I know everything about abstract classes and interfaces, if I actually start interviewing you about it, you may struggle to explain some points. So if you ever struggled with articulating your thoughts on abstract classes and interfaces, the differences between the two, and why would you use one over the other one, hopefully this video can help you. Don't forget, if you're enjoying the video, leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. If you think there is anything that I have missed, go ahead and leave it in the comment section as well. I have a C-sharp course that is out. If you would like to know C-sharp as I did, highly recommend you take a look at it. Before we actually start looking at the code, I want to outline a general idea for abstract classes and interfaces so you can get uh, a feeling for why would you want to use one over the other one and perhaps an idea of their shape. So for abstract classes, there is a set of things. There is then a commonality amongst all of those things and you're taking that commonality and extracting it into an abstract class. With interfaces, you have two parts of your code, two components where one depends on the other one. And you want to break this dependency because you want to substitute the thing that it's depending on or the thing that it's consuming essentially introducing more flexibility into your code. This is where the contract, the bridge, the interface comes in, ultimately used to decouple your components in code. With this, let's go ahead and get started. Here I have a bunch of files. We're going to go through them one by one. The first is the abstract class over here and then the interfaces. We're going to take a look at the difference between the two syntactically first. Interfaces are a little bit smaller. So the first thing that we can take a look at is uh, you cannot actually have access modifiers or you cannot put the ones that you want. You can only put public, you can make them explicit, but you can't actually specify them. With abstract classes, you can put whatever access modifier that you want. And the only thing that you can define on interfaces are methods, either abstract methods or just method definitions, which are the same on the abstract class, which are abstract methods over here and then default implementation methods. You can also have them on the abstract class. However, there is a slight difference between the two. So a default implementation method on an abstract class can be consumed within the inheriting class. So a string can be used over here. And then if I instantiate a square, I can also consume that function on there. If I'm using an interface, the space, which is implementing the interface, I cannot reach the default implementation on here. I will actually have to go to the interface itself. So here I will be able to reach this function. Okay. Now you can also specify properties on an interface. However, that is only going to be concerned for the methods of the property because a property is three parts, two methods, getter and setter, depending on which ones you specify, and also a field. With an abstract class, you can actually get fields. If you specify a property on an interface, you don't actually get a field. And then another thing that an abstract class can have that an interface cannot have is a constructor. And that is pretty much it for the differences between the two. You can also talk about commonalities between the two, how are abstract classes and interfaces similar. Neither of them can be instantiated. They both can still contain static members. And that's about it. Now, moving on to how you would actually use an abstract class versus an interface. You implement an interface and you inherit from an abstract class. You can implement multiple interfaces on a single class and then you can only inherit from one abstract class. The reason you can only inherit from one is because there is a notion of identity. A square is a shape. A square cannot be an animal and a shape. A square at that point has schizophrenia. So when we're talking about implementing an interface, it is more, do I have this behavior? Am I playing this role? These are partly the ideas that you can figure out when you're thinking or you're talking about uh, implementing some kind of feature. Is it a thing or do we have this behavior? It may sway you in one direction or the other, whether you should be choosing an abstract class or an interface. 
So that's about it for the difference between the two. If you're wondering about the example that I have over here, it's a shape example, a square is a shape, a circle is a shape, you can then have triangles, you can have other examples such as vehicles, animals, so truck, motorcycle, car, those are vehicles for animals, you have red cat, etc. These are very good uh, analogies to understand abstract classes. However, when you actually get to programming, uh, the concepts vary slightly. And generally in web development, you don't really get that many opportunities to create abstract classes like that. Although there are places like video games, where if you have some kind of objects on the plane, you get a lot of options to basically say, ah, I should have this abstract class where all of the objects have some kind of position in the game. For the interfaces, I have an example of a cache. So if, for example, I have my application using cache everywhere, if I want to substitute a cache at implementation at any point, going from Redis to memcached or to some kind of other cache that is going to come out in the future. I don't have to change the whole application to depend on a different service. I just substitute the implementation for the interface and, uh, and my application should just keep working as it does. Why would you actually use an abstract class over an interface or an interface over an abstract class? In some cases, there really is no difference whether you use one or the other one. And abstract classes can behave like interfaces. And this is what this example is about. I'm going to tell you what to do in this situation. For example, we have something that depicts an operation. This is really to mock functions. Okay. We have an operation that is going to increment. We then have an I try. So we try to execute an operation and the operation that we depend on is this interface. We then uh, have a night time. Again, we start up a stop a stopwatch and we try to time the time it takes to execute an operation. And again, we depend on this I operation. We then have the individual permutations where we compose things together. Now with abstract classes, you can effectively arrive at the same structure where you have your abstract operation, abstract try, uh, really the same implementation, abstract time, again, the same implementation and then abstract operation and the same permutation. So really no difference between the two. What should you be using in this situation? You shouldn't be using abstract classes because at that point you can actually bolt on more responsibilities to this operation rather than just being used in this mechanism. If all operations are sharing some kind of commonality between all of them, which is not present over here, you should be reaching for abstract classes. And again, to reiterate, in this example, we don't have that commonality. So there is no reason to use an abstract class unless you're actually foreseeing that commonality coming in the future, then you want to opt in for an abstract class. Now for favoring interfaces, there are just some things that you can do with interfaces that you cannot do with abstract classes. And here we have the first example, I am naming it scopes because you can effectively control how much of the object you want to access using an interface. So for example, we have state that you can initialize and that after initialization, it is ready to be read. So we accept some kind of state, we initialize it, and then it's ready to be consumed where we cannot change it, we cannot reinitialize it again, effectively giving us immutability, and a way a structured way to use our code. So we can't actually make mistakes. Another things that interfaces can be used for, and it's uh, very rare in the C sharp world, but uh, a concept called traits or roles, where you have some kind of context where the functionality only belongs to that context, a class that can be used inside that context implements this interface, effectively enabling this programming paradigm, which you cannot do with abstract classes, because if you have many contexts, many roles, and a class can play many roles, you should be able to implement multiple interfaces. If these are abstract classes, you can only play one role, which defeats the whole purpose of this paradigm. So interfaces can only be used in these scenarios. And by the way, for scopes, you can get away with using classes for it, but you're going to have to create a new class with its own individual functionality. And if you have shared states between those classes and you have to constantly transition it, it just becomes more code volume rather than bolting on all of those scopes onto one class. Okay. And now for the big debate of inheritance versus composition, inheritance, meaning you are trying to use classes and abstract classes and inheritance in order to extend your application or extend behavior or add more behavior to your application. And then composition is for interfaces, 
where you're decoupling everything with interfaces and then composing it together. It's uh, not really a big debate. Everybody will generally tell you prefer composition over inheritance. And I generally agree. However, in this example, we are implementing the same thing in two different ways. We're using abstract classes and interfaces. And you're going to see that, okay, inheritance has its place with some benefits. However, composition also has its benefits. And we're going to see what they are in just a second. Here we have an example, we want to send an interface, there is some kind of commonality and abstraction between all of the notifications that we can send where we check, should this notification be sent? And should we execute it? These are the two main abstractions, we have a check and we have an execute. When we want to alert an admin, this is what the con this is the condition that we're checking. And this is the actual execution logic for how we're sending a notification. Then we have a notify sweet spot. So again, condition and uh, then actually sending the notification. Currently, these two implementations are the same. However, imagine that uh, we're just getting different users that we want to notify. The notification itself is a slightly different, slightly different text subject. Are we sending to mobile email, right? So this can vary quite a bit. But understand that what we have here is we have a coupling between a condition and the actual logic for executing a notification to this notification abstract class and to this process over here. And this yields us a very succinct way of expressing what notifications we have and for what reasons and to where and how they're being sent. The downsides here is that this logic cannot be reused in other places. Now, if there are no other places to use it in, this is 100% fine. This is preferable. If this logic should be used in other places, you go with interfaces, you're decoupling notifications from the actual way that you're sending notification and you're decoupling it from how you're actually going to perform the check. You create interfaces for it. So you have some kind of constraint and you have some kind of notification that you want to perform and then to replace that abstract class, we actually have a class where we're composing the interfaces together, and then we're performing the same logic. And then the individual implementations, here's the admin constraint, the sweet spot constraint, and then the actual notification constraint. These can now be surfaced in any other place in your application. And where you're actually using them at those points, you actually have to compose this feature together. So the second option, a lot more flexible, but also a little bit more verbose. And that is the main trade off that you have between interfaces and abstract classes and inheritance and composition. Inheritance when used correctly, you have very succinct code, which can only really be present in one place. And uh, you don't have to wonder about if it's being used in another place. Uh, these are really isolated units where these notifications are notifications. It's not a thing that behaves like a notification that can be placed anywhere within your application, where with interfaces, the reason people will just say, just prefer composition, because then you don't have to make this distinction between, uh, is this a thing that doesn't need to be used anywhere else? You just define your interfaces, everything is decoupled, and then you have to explicitly start defining places where they compose, and then you actually have to do the composition or orchestration at some point. By going default composition, you're paying the price of code volume and complexity, you have a lot more components. However, that is going to give you flexibility over implementations. With inheritance, you generally get a very succinct implementation where the logic is very closely collocated and depends on each other. So if the structure is correct, it's very hard to mess it up. The potential price that you need to pay with inheritance is that abstract class that you have extracted if that abstraction has to be used in other places other than these set of classes that you extracted the, common, uh, the commonality from, then you're in trouble. Then you will need to go ahead and refactor your code into it being an interface and start defining these place, places of composition. And this will be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you have found it useful. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, again, leave them in the comment section. If you would like the source code for this video as well as my other videos, please come support me on Patreon. I will really appreciate it. And a big and special thank you goes out to all of my Patreon supporters. You help me make these videos. As always, thank you for watching. Have a good day.